everyone, and welcome to the first round of elimination for today's Path to 100K. Fourth week of competition today. We're watching Torch up against Counter Logic, and we're underway. Here's the cover who's playing what and where they're going. On the bottom side, I'm at the pristine side of the green grass. We've got Torch here. Fun Ball Z on AMC this time around. Spoo is going to be playing Ra. High Rock going to be playing Chalk. Across the way, we have Emma Leap 2 on Sun Wukong, and of course, last but not least, Shadow Nightmare on Zeus. But before they can go to the next round, they have to get through the red team. This is going to be the top side of your minimap, the destroyed side, Counter Logics. We're going to see Arithic on Neath going to the duo lane with his support. Fire first on Athena in the jungle. We're going to see a Thanatos coming out on Retrospect. A Shake Tank coming here in the mid lane with Jean Quay, one of the highest win rates currently in competitive play. And finally, God of the Yellow River, Habwa, whip it. We saw a Heavenly Agility activation there. Spoo did pick that up at level one. Trying to find a gank there. It. Shake Take uh, retreated back towards his tower in time. A Thunderstrike came out, did a little bit of damage there, uh, but it's not going to be available for him. Uh, fun fact, we're looking at the uh, statistics for each of these players. Oh. Spoo actually has a .4 KD with Raw. High Rock, however, is very successful with Chalk. And in fact, he's more successful with Chalk than he is with Thor or Bastet. Yeah, I love Chalk. He's one of my favorite characters right now. He's super powerful, doesn't really have a lot of appeal. I think a lot of players aren't really used to the not having 80 forms of CC on a character, but he's still so, <laughs> so potent. The damage, the silence, the immunity. Sure, I mean, the CC immunity is huge, and that, that three-second silence is probably, uh, you hit it right on the head there, that is one of the highest uh, effective ultimates we have, but uh, I think you're exactly right. Players uh, have been testing Chalk left and right. Oh, Shing uh, really does prefer his Chalk, especially in League play, but hasn't been testing it in tournaments for the sole reason that he doesn't have the utility that you'd expect from other characters. Right. Left side, Amelito hopping on this blue buff, though, trying to grab it up. Hand of the Gods comes out, stunning out Fire Fist, forcing him towards the tower. There goes a sprint activation, but not going to be utilized here. He gets rooted immediately. Beautiful play by Neat. Yeah, the double hit on the Spirit Arrow there was gorgeous. And maybe he doesn't realize how much he just saved Fire Fist. I mean, that, that was not only saving that kill, but that was saving First Blood. That's exactly right. He's going to force him out here. Neat kind of hanging out. That blue buff was finally picked up across the way on the right side of the map in Soul Lane. A lot of aggression coming out here. Chalk as well as Ra. That's a healing duo if I've ever seen one. That Rain Dance plus the Solar Blessing to keep them alive. And Hob and Thanatos are forced back to their tower. You know, with the healing uh, from the the rain dance, of course, and of and the uh, the mana given to you by Overflow, High Rock sure. doesn't really feel the need for a Bumba's mask here. He's just kind of throwing in, kind of running a two one two right now. He's going to look to jungle, but it doesn't really cost him a lot, and it, not nearly as much as other junglers. And we're seeing something very similar from the other team as well. Counter Logic has Thanatos, a character who heals himself up a lot, has very low mana cost, so he has actually opted himself for Death Toll. One surprising thing as well is, you know, this is actually Shadow Nightmare's second worst character in tournament play, being Zeus. Freya, uh, a character he's played three times in tournament, he's 3-0 and with that character, and 3.38 KD, whereas Zeus is about a 1. In fact, the last time he played Zeus, 4 kills, 4 deaths, and 9 assists in a 37-minute match. So Shadow Nightmare playing Zeus, although he has been uh, in a weakened state, uh, certainly not completely out of it. As you see, it pushes out Junkway out of the lane. The mid-camps are spawning back up. Left side goes to Athena, but she's in trouble. She's in a lot of trouble. She gets knocked up. Few more shots. The preemptive strike is touched there, but he might be able to get out. He's looking for a shot. Emilito pretty quick here. One more good shot's going to do it. She's trying to get behind the creeps. Here comes... Oh! oh, she pulls the red buff onto her. Emilito finds a kill, but there's nowhere for him to go. At what cost? He goes in on that damage buff, and he gets to Athena, so it's going to be support for support here. But one thing I do like about this, Brandon... He finished Midas Boots, Athena's going for shoes. So the more pressure he puts on her and shuts her down, he's going to get more passive gold gain yeah. and kind of slow that down there. So he's going to win out in a long match here. He's also level 4 comparatively to the level 3 Athena, so he has a pretty big advantage overall right now. And of course, those Midas Boots can be sold at any time to pick up something like Ninja Tabi to ensure that he's going to get some extra cooldown reduction. Oh, tournament lane, tournament on top of that Shake Tank forced out, but it's hard to take out Zhang Kui, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's so tanky right now, especially considering the fact that he hasn't used his ultimate yet, which means he still has all of that passive. Recall Demons hasn't used up, and even if he did dive there, he could have committed to Recall Demons and doubled his passive defenses. 
Raw ultimate coming out of the right side and clear out that wave and head on home here. You always, always see this happen if an ultimate's used to clear a wave. He just kind of heads on home to heal back up. Uh, the Heavenly Agility was picked off early, so we don't really have a whole lot of stats, but the Empiric Shroud is kind of really all you need there. One thing we have been seeing, DM, is a, a difference in the starting builds for Hunters since Chin Size was yeah. uh, actually nerfed there. So what's your opinion on the start items for Hunters nowadays? You know, we're seeing a lot of different things. Uh, this being one of the more popular over on the right side, you can check out the Death Toll into Aussie. Uh, we see a lot of Heart Seekers still coming out. And given that uh, we haven't seen uh, Mr. Funball here head back, it's likely... Oh, wait, mid lane, we have something going down here. Shadow Nightmare getting stunned inside the ult. Stunned inside again! He's getting super risky. The silence is there. He gets him with the Death Scythe. Hyrox is going to be invincible for a second here, but I don't know if he's going to want to commit to this. He does dive the tower. Oh. There's Emily. So with the kill. Talk coming to the tower lane. It looks like Emily in a lot of trouble here. Forced back, but they don't really have any follow-up to boot. Thanatos used everything in that fight. The soul rip. Uh, soul reap as well as his ultimate hovering death forced out, but could not get the kill he needed. Although Neath and Junkwei fell down in exchange for Zeus there. So three to two in favor of Torch so far. A beautiful rotation from the Thanatos right side. Ra exchanging blows here with Hubwa. There goes Celestial Beam. Does he have an ultimate? It's coming out! Searing Pain on the ground. It's not going to hit Hubwa. Barely escaping death right there. A very short range ultimate and tried to risk it but didn't have the distance. Man, that was it basically skinned the side of his back. And, you know, Ra is a character that needs to get ahead. Going into the late game, sure, he's going to be tanky, but his damage is going to rely on his scaling. Whereas across the way, Hobble really has the damage regardless. I mean, his scaling is super high. A few core items is going to ensure that that ult is going to hit for 800 to 1,000 guaranteed. We do have a small lead for Torch and uh, for Torch so far. I mean, they're sitting at about 1,700 gold and 1,600 experience across the way. Hair Logic's kind of just farming up right now. Hobwa does actually have the teleport, whereas Ra is relying on the Heavenly Agility to get back to his lane. Uh, Heavenly Agility does have a 90-second cooldown. It's not as effective uh, as a replacement for teleport as Sprint would be, but he helps himself out in the team aspect as well as the fact that he's going to scale up that healing on his Solar Blessing. Emilito is actually going to rush Eye of Providence 3 here very early early on what's his thought process here I think he just wants to win the early ward game. Uh, going across the way, still sitting at level 1 eye, we have Athena placing down those regular wards. Emilito, if he finds them out, he's going to be able to clear up, ensure that that's free farm at the mid camps, free pressure onto Gold Fury, and so far it's been working out. You know, he has two kills right now, one death, and was able to pick up that Midas boot very, very early, and a smart choice. I mean, that's going to scale his gold up so well, and now he's free to roam as much as he can. Uh, Funballs is now in the left lane, and, and he's protected. Neetha, uh, notably a little bit weaker than AMC is right now, and AMC's so good at boxing. Speaking of boxing, right inside, Emilito putting about 25% to Shake Tank, who has been forced out. They're waiting out the mid camp here and finally respawns. This one's going to be free for Torch. A right side's getting way down as well. You see uh, Retrospect actually looking towards the mid lane as that maybe people are going to get aggressive here, but it just seems like it's going to go to Torch here for free. Shake Tank so, so shaky on his tower here. He's getting constantly pressured, but he's doing very well with it. Uh, there goes the storm call activation coming out. John Quay coming out here. Cha coming out on top of it. Looking for the opportunity. The Book of Demons did come through. Storm call. Emolito. Emolito coming from the back. He lands the tiger on top. Jingle bang and the dunk from Thanatos. He's going to try to slow him down, but they cannot be stopped. The kill goes down. Neath ultimately coming out here. We actually countered by the somersault cloud there on Sun Kong. He's going to be forced out. Ross still chasing down the right side. Looks like Zeus is in the mix as well. The crushing wave's going to miss. They avoided it completely. The read is real. Jingle Bang on the ground. Searing Pain's going to come out, but not even necessary. The snipe goes through. It's going to be a 2 for 0 exchange. Not done yet. Thunderstrike comes down on Thanatos, and back to the tower he goes with the tail between his legs. Torch coming out strong. So now it's offside. We're going to see Torch maintaining a pretty big lead here, increasing it by 1,000. The experience difference has increased close to 2K here as they continue their push. Finally, we're seeing respawns coming out from Counter Logics, who have a lot of ground to make up. Yeah, it's, it's tough to start this early on. Now they did, uh, you know, they haven't lost a tower just yet. That's the biggest benefit to them. Uh, and the distance in gold and experience can be made up with objectives, but they're under so much pressure right now. The mid-tower dropping low. Uh, Heartseeker is done for Neath, and she's going to start farming up, but she's looking like she's having a tough time against AMC, about 700, 600 gold behind. And that's going to be rough. Uh, AMC, not notably one of the strongest hunters in the game, but it should be noted that when he's big, he is 
big, one of the hardest scaling characters in the game, thanks to the passive uh, movement speed and passive attack speed that's given to him by those hives. He is one of the, if not the strongest tower pusher in the game. And you can really see that reflected in the map right now as that final tower, or that first tower on the left side is hanging on by a thread. Neath is in so much trouble trying to defend herself, and honestly, Neath doesn't do that well one versus one. We see Neath picked up in the, the European scene so often. Uh, Thantos in the mid lane, look for opportunity to dunk down. Aegis Hammond gets activated by Junkway, a little bit eager there. Dunking down on top, Zeus ultimate, get a three-man stack. Storm caught from behind. This could be terrible for CLG if they're in a lot of trouble. Soul Reap comes through, burst damage, chain lightning, detonate comes out, and the lightning hits hard as Torch gets a 3-0 exchange again. It's funny that that's called Storm Call, as the heavens were raining down, yeah. allowing Shadow Nightmare to burst down three people. That's rough. <laughs> it, you know, it's going to turn into a Gold Fury for Torch, and they're going to start stacking that gold up further and further. And I think, you know, CLG, if they want to get in on this, they have to start grouping up with a little bit more uh, preemptive thought. Their forethought is not here. They're not thinking these out clearly, and I think they're just a little bit uh, nervous. And so we should Emilito taking tower shots here. The decoy is going to be able to stack it up. He goes up on his cloud. It looks like he's going to be able to survive, though. But they were able to get the tower, and that's and why one. it was used. That was left free. Side. Yeah, left side is getting going down as well. Fun ball just taking it out. That's two towers and a gold fury. Suddenly, 7,200 in the lead. Here's Torch. Yeah. The distance is, is incredible. Uh, you know, they blink from Thanatos on, on the right side there. Uh, tier 1, Hand of the Gods as well. Uh, Athena, credit goes to her. This is exactly how you want to play from behind as a support. Finish that Hand of the Gods 3 and look for the steal. Right now, we don't really have much for Counter Logic to do. Taking a look at the jungle here, mostly everything is going right side. Snipe's not going to be good. Uh, it's just bare. Look at Wibben having to go back here. You know Spoo is just so excited about this because that's more free farm. I don't know if we're going to have the teleport up here. It looks like he's running around. No, he's leaving the base manually. This could be a tower, so he wish, but it looks like Spoo is actually going to back off here. Um, let's take a look at the items here, Dry Bear, and this is one of the items I talk about. It's one of my favorites. I think it's one of the best in the game right now, Heavenly Agility. You know, it's a fantastic item, and it's a very uh, great counter to, uh, you know, I guess a, a secondary option to the, the the sprint, and the heal is what's so important. Uh, you can see on the passive, a healing increase by 25% for the duration, and with long matches, we see Raz getting incredible numbers for healing output, and that, that you know, that initiation opportunity for them to just pop it, go in for a big grab, uh, get a pick, and honestly, it helps with uh, retreating, it helps with initiating, it helps with healing, it helps with so much. Oh, there's the crushing wave, gonna hit two. Athena's charging Defender of Olympus as well. Shadow Nightmare does manage to get the ult off, but he has an ult of his own on him. Looking for the detonate, there's the double as they continue the chase. Shadow Nightmare just trying to bait here. Retrospect Ooh. gets picked off, unable to find the final hit. Shadow Nightmare counting his lucky stars. You know, I, I really like Emilito's play today. 2-1-7 on Sun Kong. And fun fact, this is the first time that Emilito has actually played Sun Kong support in 2014 as a support player. Uh, he plays Bacchus, Sobek, and Amir so far. Uh, his uh, win-loss ratio, 3-2 with Sobek. Bacchus, 3-3. And Amir is 1-0. But this is the first time, 4014, he's attempted to play Sun Kong support, and it looks like he's hit home here, and I think it just came down to possible, you know, just maybe rigidity, not really wanting to go with the flow and pick up Sun Kong support as other players have been, and I'm sure after today, he's very excited to continue on with his habit. So, Driver, check this out. Emilito, Midas Boots are done, Sovereignty's just been finished, go over across the way, Fire First just finishing the Midas Boots now, very far, Shake Tank getting stunned out, activating Recall Demons, there's the Jingu Bong, not enough damage to clear it out, very tanky, but I don't think they're done yet, here is High Rock, he gets the Torrent for the free kill, he's going to walk away from this one for free. No follow-up there. The towers are under pressure. Emily too gonna throw out that jingle bang, trying to force it out. Left side fun ball is juggling two versus one here, level 14 at AMC, and he's so terrifying. You see him throwing out those basic attacks left and right. They don't want to go anywhere near that angry be a chalk diving the tower. Storm call going down. Detonate comes out as well. Thanatos junk wave both dead. Crush wave gets used here. Look for the thunder strike. It's coming out. Chalk, chalk. Chuck, Chuck, does he have it? The throw comes out. It's not going to hit. He can't get the kill. Hubwa survives, but Athena does not need. There goes the hit from Elito. Not going to hit, though, on top. The hit goes down. Does he have enough damage? Just needs one more hit. Needs to survive as well, but the towers not boasting the same livelihood. 
Shadow Nightmare jumping in front of the World Weaver to save him. Alito gets pressured back, but Shadow Nightmare finds a stun for the retreat as Funball rotates over, trying to keep him safe as well. Right now, Torch is just controlling every fight, every point of contention, and they have 12,000 gold to prove it. Thanatos looking for Duck, left side, gonna hit the rod, there goes Death side. Soul Rape's gonna get it, Fumball's over here, Retrospect is gonna feel the retrospect of his decision here, as the Stinger comes out, the shot, Fumball, he wants it, AMC comes through here, gets the Swarm down, as well as the Honey, that's gonna be the death of Thanatos, Raw for Thanatos, Junkway is over here, Crushing Wave is not available, but they don't really need it here, there goes Exorcism, and AMC goes down, so Thanatos starts a beautiful initiation for CLG, and gets a two-for-one exchange for his own life. They need to make something happen off this. You know, Gold Fury's not up for 30. They need to find a kill. Check out the storm call getting channeled here. It's going to get the silence on the Shake Tank. Torrent's going to miss after after the Thunder Strike. It was very close. That actually could have been a kill. He was a little bit too close. Had he thrown the axe farther, it might have made something happen. Now, oh, Wibben on the bottom side in trouble. Oh, man. Atlas to the Yellow River getting used, but you know the transformations are coming up. We're just waiting for it. Jingle Bunk's going to be good. There's the Water Spout, Water Cannon. But the, oh, Crushing Wave through my keep. I'm safe. I don't know if he's going to be able to get the kill. Oh, he's get gotten greedy. greedy. He's going to oh. pay for that one. He gets great. That's a shame. He turns around. He had the leapfrog of initiation with the water spout, crushing wave in response. He played that beautifully, and that was his chance to get out. He stuck around a little bit too long, and now Counter Logic's going to be missing his damage output in this next engagement. You see, the core items have yet to be finished over there. Uh, actually, the initiation comes out, avoiding the Thanos ultimate by priming his preemptively beautiful play by Emily the dunking down in slow motion. Retrospect, already dead. Look for the hit from Chalk. Searing pain comes through, and the pain is felt by Neath as Athena tries to. Dash away. The talk comes out there. Jean Quay popping in. Emily Julian is activated. Looks like Emily Julian is still alive somehow. Some way does go down in the process, but he traded his own life for four enemy players. It's definitely worth it. And we saw the Heavenly come out at the end there. Again, one of my favorite moves, or rather favorite items in the game right now. It is a six second immunity to slows plus movement speed boost for the team. That is an incredible thing to say out loud, not think to yourself, wow, that's, that's kind of OP. <laughs> Yet no one seems to be picking it up, but you're seeing those players that are willing to separate from the meta. Players like Spoo picking it up and doing great things with it. Now, Torch has actually destroyed the Gold Fury. You saw the, the solo coming out from Funball, barely taking any damage. Phoenix hanging on with the skin of its teeth, just trying to get something done here. A few hits is going to take that down, and Funball looks like he's ready to commit to it. Mid lane being pressured hard. Thanatos coming for the flank, looking to far, uh, fight away, uh, his way to the left side of the map. Uh, Got to go around there. The mid Phoenix is still available. The blink is activated there. What is that? Comp no, it's tier two blink, so 60 second cooldown on that one. Uh, you know, I think Torch is really willing to start experimenting here. You see the Sun Kong pick up by, by Emilito, and he, honestly, he had never tried this before in tournament play. Same thing goes for Spoo. Dunk comes out from the Thanos. Double Soul Read. The silence is there. Double Spirit Arrow. Thunderstrike comes out. Torrent comes out as well. Searing Paint, Knock and Land, Storm. Call from above. Retrospect goes down to the burst from Chalk, and now the mid Phoenix is being pressured. You know, I, I love this play from Torch so far, but here's a rotation from CLG. Uh, High Rock's in trouble here. Heavenly Agility not going to get him out of that one. A lot of damage coming through. You see Arthic forced back. They're going to be able to finally finish up this Phoenix, thanks to the Solar Blessing and the minions finally getting in there. But right, or rather left side, Crushing Wave's not going to be good. Oh my god, Funball almost getting out of that one. So un unfortunate for him. Shake Tank, very low right now. Recall Demon's doing work, but the Jingle Bomb too strong. Stun coming out. Fire First is gone. And now... It's just two versus three, and I don't like the odds on that one for counter logic. Teleport, death side, get Sun Wukong, trying to get out of the back end here. Shadow pops the sprint. He has an eight level advantage, two stacks. One more would do it, but Retrospect gets out in time. The mid Phoenix did fall, however, so regardless of what you think about the last engagement, now the Fire Nation has declared war here. They're going to attack on the mid lane, and that's going to make things so much more difficult for Counter Logics to defend the map against Fire Giant, Gold Fury, uh, any kind of major objectives. Uh, you know, and back to my original point, you know, going into this, right? Spoo had a 0.4 KD on Ra. Agni and Kronos, his best gods in that solo lane role. He's going to pick up Raw here again. He's 1-1 one and one with that character with a very, very low kill death ratio. Not doing so hot, but today he's going to be sitting on a 2-1-7. and seven. That damage output is insane. The Heaven Agility is paying off in droves.
And again, it's one of my favorite items specifically for this reason. It just gives so much team fight potential. Immunity to slows, especially considering there's a lot of slows. Backflip's going to slow. We have the, you know, the, um, the card coming out from Jean Quay. That's a, a five-second slow. Uh, we have slows on Thanatos, slows on Athena. I mean, there's different things uh, that will get completely removed here. Now going for the Fire Giant. Torch really doesn't have much competition here. Oh, oh wait. Defender of Olympus has been used. They're going for the steal a little bit too early right there. Coming out, we saw the taunt. There's a steal chance here, but he's silenced thanks to the storm call. And look at this. Just cleaning it up. The hovering death way too late. This one's looking like it's torches. There goes the burst. Four players down. Neath being the sole survivor running for her life. The knockup. There's Celestial Beam trying to go over the wall, but you can't do that silly knee. She gets bursted down by the searing pain there. And you get to see why Neath is just not the character everyone expected her to be. And doesn't get picked up as much. But AMC coming out strong today. I, for one, am excited to see the damage numbers here. 14 1 and 11 on Zeus in this match from Shadow Nightmare. Absolutely mind blowing. Going into this, he's 1.0 KD with a 